big part of any home improvement project is of course the cleanup. We did create a little bit of dust, mixed with a lot of dust, a lot of particles, uh, some hot elbow grease, a couple sweepers, and uh, we're ready. Uh, we'll be ready for our next step, putting the top molding on. Um, that of course will be another day. Welcome to weekend two of our rebuild. As you can see, I put this cap on top here just to give you a look of what we're going to do today. Now this is the cap piece that I saved from that top wall that was up there. So I took it down, I'm going to reuse it for the top wall, but um, I wanted to show what we're going to do today. Also see I've made some repairs where we damaged some of the drywall and taking it off. We spent most of yesterday, in fact all of yesterday, getting our parts for our project. We hadn't up to this point. So, again, the internet is a wonderful source. And we ended up actually going to three different suppliers for our parts. We went one place for the newel post, went one place for the iron, and we went another place for the hardwood um, banister railings. Before we cap the top of this, we got to make sure that we have a solid foundation for where we're going to bolt in our newel post. The newel posts get lag bolted into the structure. So I noticed right here is a newel post spot. You can see this piece of wood got damaged uh, when I was taking this apart. So I'll take a little saw, we'll cut and chisel this out, I'll replace it with a nice solid piece of wood. There's also one spot at the top, you can kind of see it right there, that needs some wood added to it for that newel post. But other than that, all the rest of the foundations are solid. We'll be able to go into them and, and get a sturdy framework up. As you can see, I'm filling this spot that we talked about. I cut the board, glued it, and put a couple of screws on the outside, and we'll be solid when we have to go into the put the new post in there. I got some boards cut. I'm going to do some start nailing in here. Now I plan to face the front of this or mold the front of this with molding. So I'm going to hold the board out that far in. A little bit about angles. Now, the average homeowner usually knows how to cut a 45 degree, 245 degree angles to get 90 degrees. But when we're dealing with steps, we got to realize that the angle this is built on versus the turn here, so the angle of the turn. So it's really simple. If you remember this little gizmo from, I don't know, sixth grade math called the protractor. Basically we've got to find this angle and to make a nice clean cut we divide it in, in half. Okay, so I already know this, I measured it out beforehand, but uh, I like to use some scrap pieces. I only had, remember I was being green, I saved these pieces, we're down to a few, so I don't want to mess up on a cut. So I got some scrap pieces here a baseboard, it doesn't matter, we're going to get the same cut. Now, <clears throat> what we got to do is use your protractor here, and I already got this cut, it is a 40 degree angle, but when I put the protractor on here, I can find that it's 40 degrees, you can see that right there, and then of course half of 40 is 20, so I set my miter saw to 20 degrees for both sides of the cut. Now remember, one cut goes one way and the other goes the other way. So first 20 this way, then it's 20 that way. Uh, that's how I do it. Some of the real good carpenters can flip the boards over and I like to just do it the way I, uh, the average homeowner would do it. Okay, that wraps up this edition of Just the Average Homeowner. You can see I trimmed it out a little bit here. Uh, some of my joints are a little open, but we're going to take care of that with caulk and uh, some wood fill. We'll fill it up, make it look all nice, you'll never even notice. Until next time, it's just the average homeowner.